Welcome to Pirate Talk, one of my favorite talks. Two years ago, I made a video giving pirate recommendations. Now I'm coming back to give you more. I will leave that video linked in the description if you'd like to watch it because I will not be repeating any of the books that were in that video. I'm giving you 10 fresh new recommendations. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch that. That's fine, you don't have to watch it. I'm just letting people know that there's another video available with more recommendations. Anyway, the first book that I'm gonna recommend is a recent read, and that's Deep as the Sky, Red as... What, No Treasure Island? Man, this video is awful. Okay. The books that I mentioned in my last video are Peter Pan, Treasure Ooh, Island, Red Seas Under Red Skies, Frenchman's K Creek, By Sea and Sky, On Stranger Tides, and Pirate Latitudes. If you're interested in learning more about any of these or hear me gush about some of them, check out the previous video. The first book that I'm going to recommend in this video is a recent read, Deep as the Sky, Red as the Sea. This is a historical novel following Shek Young, better known as Ching Shi, or the Chinese Pirate Queen. If you've ever heard of the historical Chinese Pirate Queen who uh, commanded thousands of fleets and was one of the most successful and brutal pirates in history, this is her, and this is her story. I'm someone who's done my fair share of independent pirate research on historical pirates because I just find them fascinating. And Ching Ji is a pirate that I love looking into because her legend is cool. I went into this book not knowing that this was her story, but after just one chapter, the similarities were so strong that I knew exactly who I was reading about. And from what we know of Ching Ji, this follows her story, at least in the beginning, so loyally, but then it goes off and it does its own thing because naturally this is a fiction novel. Now I will say for me, I felt that this book was quite short <laughs> and it I think it's under 350. I have it right here. Let me tell you how long it is. Oh my goodness, it's 284 pages. It's so short and I loved what it covered. I loved the amount of her life that it covered. I just wanted it to cover it more extensively. I wanted the author to slow down a little bit, take her time, really build out the scenes that we had. I wanted this to be a 500 page epic of her life as opposed to uh, a very, what I thought was a very fast paced story. Um, I read some Goodreads reviews that a lot of people disagree with me. A lot of people think that it was very slow and dense and read like a history textbook. I don't know what to tell you about that. That was not the experience that I had, but I'm also very interested in this history. So do with that what you want. Next, I'm gonna offer you a couple of non-fictions if you're interested in that. So I have two on this list, one that I've already completed and one that I'm currently reading. So the one that I've completed is Under the Black Flag. The tagline is the romance and the reality of life among pirates. So his goal is to tell these legends briefly, concisely, as well as to kind of de-romanticize piracy because we have this very swashbuckling uh, adventure fights camaraderie, found family sort of version of piracy that we tell, but truly they were criminals. And even the ones that were known for how um, merciful or uh, generous they were in comparison to their other pirate comrades, even those ones were still thieves, rapists, murderers, criminals. <laughs> so uh, it kind of talks about, there's a whole really long chapter dedicated just to torture and the torture methods that many pirates would use. So it's, it's a mix of really concise summary of pirate legends as well as kind of the reality of what piracy truly was. The other nonfiction that I have, the one that I'm currently reading is called The Republic of Pirates. I'm listening to this on audiobook. I don't own it physically yet. So far, I like this one even more than Under the Black Flag because it's not so concise on their legends because even though I think I personally like knowing the true pirate history and not just the romanticized version, though I love the romanticized version too. I personally really enjoy learning about true pirate history and knowing about what they were truly like as far as we know. But I also want the legends. I also want to know what they did, what they accomplished, even if it's not necessarily heroic. And this goes into far more depth of the legends and also shows the 
really, really horrible things that they did. And I just think that it flows better and it's more natural. And I think this one is longer than Under the Black Flag. So if you want something relatively concise and to the point, this is great. But if you want more, then I really, really like The Republic of Pirates. I, I'm still reading it, but I really, really like it. Next up, let's go back to the fantastical romanticized pirates. I have two for you that are kind of more epic in scope and have a good balance of piracy and magic and uh, found family and adventure, but also really thoughtful, uh, intricate things playing out. Super good. First, we have the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I've read all three of these books, and I think that this trilogy is phenomenal. I have a discussion on the trilogy with Angela from Literature Science, Science Alliance, which will be linked in this description if you want to check it out. It's on my review channel, uh, which is linked in the description just in general as well. But anyway, this follows a family of traders who, of merchant traders, who, um, uh, after the patriarch of the family, after the, the head of the family dies, uh, the, the live ship is awakened. And a live ship is a ship made of wizard wood that is sentient. So she awakens and bonds to the family. But the problem is that there's a lot of family strife and conflict right now because one, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of world ch uh, changes happening with slave trade being introduced and more and more traders uh, starting to to engage in slave trade and with families that aren't willing to engage in that and certain um, more hard times coming as well as internal family drama <laughs> with with the ship not being passed down to the the uh, the next in line quite as they would have expected. Anyway, so there's a lot going on in the realm of all of that, but also one of the main perspectives that we follow is Kenneth, the Pirate King. He's ruthless. He's not a swashbuckling good guy. He is bad. <laughs> and we follow him and his pirate crew who are kind of on the spectrum of morality. Again, this is a series that's more epic in, in scope, very slow burn. There's a lot going on here, but even though it's very slow burn, there's also a lot of nautical fun, and I really, really love this trilogy. And I also have The Bone Ships, which is one that I didn't continue on after reading book one, but in preparing for this video, I was remembering the components of the book and I'm questioning my judgment. So The Bone Ships is the first book in the Tide Child trilogy. And this is in a world where these ships are made from ancient dragon bones. And a dragon hasn't been seen in hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years, if I remember, I don't remember exactly how long. Uh, so anyway, when they find ancient dragon bones, they use them to create a ship and there's diagrams and pictures in here to kind of show you what that looks like, right? Or maybe I just Googled some fan art because I don't see them here now. I might've just Googled some fan art after I read the book. Anyway, this follows a black ship, which is a ship, it's, it's a crew of people who are criminals. <laughs> They, they're, they're murderers, they're thieves, they're bad guys that are basically ostracized from society and they've been assigned to a black ship, which is a ship destined to set sail, fight, and uh, help the world, but you're gonna die. That's your sentencing. You're, you're being sentenced to death, but you're doing it in a longer form, more suffering way. <laughs> but in this too, we have found family, we have really great relationship dynamics, we have uh, people who are kind of realizing their potential and rising up in their desperate situations to do more. Uh, we have mythical creatures and um, uh, tasks that have to be completed and it's, <laughs> There are so many individual components in the way I describe this book that make me think, did I just read it at the wrong time? Because I remember thinking, this is a good book. It was just unbearably boring. But I prefer a really slow burn. And what a lot of people call boring, those are usually books that I love. So I'm confused as to my, I'm confused by my reaction to this in retrospect. And I'm gonna ask you, if you've read the trilogy, should I continue it? Was I, did I just read this at the wrong time and didn't jive with it when I really should have? Regardless, that's what this book is. If you're interested in a, uh, I mean, they do plunder ships, they, they capture ships and plunder them. And while I don't think they're ever in this book, I don't think they're ever outright called pirates. They're, 
they're basically pirates. At least I would I would say that they're pirate adjacent and that it fits for this video, I think. Just a different kind of pirates, maybe. For something very different from everything else on this list, I have a book recommendation that I read so long ago that I don't remember it really strongly. And I, it doesn't fit with the type of book that I would normally recommend, but I do wanna give you a variety of different types of pirate stories in this video and not just what are like what I go for always. So anyway, this book is called Pirate Alley and this is modern day pirates. This is, if I'm remembering correctly, this is a cruise ship that gets taken over by modern day pirates. So not the swashbuckling, you know, sword carrying kind of pirates. This is what happens today. And there's detectives involved. There's police forces trying to investigate. It's a very modern day story. Again, really not the kind of book that I personally go to and I think I remember coming out of this book saying, this was a good book, just wasn't quite my type of pirates, but I want it on this list because I want to have a good, good kind of variety of choices for you to choose from. Sorry, I don't remember a ton about it, so I can't give you a better summary than Modern Pirates. <laughs> uh, next up for a very um, hopeful, cozy, wholesome sort of pirate story. We have Tress of the Emerald Sea. Tress is a character who lives on the rock. She lives a normal, pretty chill life and she's happy there. She's not looking for great white adventure, but when the boy that she loves is taken away and put at in danger, she sets sail over these very, very, very dangerous seas, very different from what you would think, not made out of water. She sets sail on these dangerous seas to go and save him. And along the way, she gets picked up by a pirate crew. And while they are pirates and they do capture ships and plunder, um, it's very wholesome. <laughs> it's very found family. It's very, we're all just in a bad position and we're doing what we have to, to survive or to save the ones we love or, you know, fill in blank here. This is a standalone. It is technically a part of the Cosmere, but more in an Easter egg way. It really doesn't tie in so heavily that you have to have read any Sanderson before this book. And it's just a lighthearted, wholesome, lovely adventure with some light piracy involved. The final two books on this list are going to be pirate adjacent. I asked my Discord if it was appropriate to have them on this list and they said yes. So if you don't like it, I don't take responsibility. So next up I have Vinland Saga, which is not pirates technically, but it's Vikings, which someone in my Discord called snow pirates. Another person said they're pirates that stayed. Anyway, this is a Viking tale, which is I think kind of pirate adjacent. So this is a manga following Thorfinn, who his whole quest is revenge and he teams up with people to get revenge. Very action-packed, especially in the first arc, well, exclusively in the first arc of the story. Very compelling story of revenge, of what it costs, of unraveling, and of redemption, and finding life for yourself beyond this dogged, uh, goal. This is one of the best manga I've read. I absolutely adore this series and I do highly, highly recommend it, even though it's really not piratey at all. It's kind of more wartime than it is piratey, but it is Vikings. So here it is. And the final book on this list, again, pirate adjacent, more Vikings, um, but a little bit more piratey than this is, and that's the Vinland Sagas. If you're gonna read Vinland Saga, you should read Vinland's, the Vinland Sagas. So this is the true tale of many char well, true-ish tale of many characters in this. So we follow the uh, some of the original Vikings that discovered Vinland or America and settled there. And this is their historical account. It's very dry, but it was also very interesting. This kind of sits somewhere in between fiction and nonfiction, because while it is a historical accounting of what happened, it also conflicts with other historical accountings of what happened. So, you know, it's history. It's skewed, but here it is. I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it nearly as much if I weren't invested in this and just curious to see the true figures that this story kind of uh, touches on, but it was pretty interesting to me. So there you go, those are 10 pirate or pirate adjacent, mostly, mostly true pirate stories. We have some non-fictions, we have some 
fantastical, epic adventures. We have some very lighthearted, wholesome adventures. We have a fiction that is deeply steeped in true history. And we even have one that is modern pirates. Also, if you didn't see my video yesterday, I have new merch. Some of it is pirate themed and I love it. That's also linked in the description. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you think of them. If you plan on picking any of these up, I'd love to see, I'd love to hear it. I post videos every Monday and Friday on this channel, Tuesdays and Thursdays on my review channel, which has weekly uh, reading vlogs, keeping you up to date with what I'm reading week to week, as well as dedicated reviews for some of my favorite things that I read. I'll see you again soon, bye.